You have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something. Your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Stay hungry. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Welcome to E-Commerce All-Stars, brought to you by Nadimo.com, where we help e-commerce entrepreneurs accelerate growth through modern technology and innovative thinking. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining today's show with your host, Brandon Moscow, of course. And today I'm excited. I have Josh Carey on the line. He's from ATBBQ.com. Uh, you should be sure to check them out for, for sure. He's doing some really cool things over there, and I'm glad you're on the show today. Thanks for joining us, Josh. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Today, I wanted to talk to you about two things. Um, you have a very, very huge, as far as I'm concerned, uh, YouTube following. I mean, you have almost a quarter of a million subscribers. Um, and so you've done some things really, really well there. And I'd love it if you could share with us some, some of that and those insights there. Um, and I'm also going to ask you a, a quick little question at the end in regards to the uh, – your enjoy now, pay later success and whether or not you're finding much success with that. Sure. I love it though, before we start, if you could just dive right in and tell us a little bit about yourself and atbbq.com, uh, give people a little bit more of a back on you and the company, and then we'll just jump right into the uh, YouTube channel. Absolutely, yeah. So the, the company was founded uh, actually by my parents in 2009, so we're hitting our 10th year. Um, we started making and manufacturing grills and smokers back in 2007, found we needed a place to sell them, and they had built an online store, and uh, the years before I joined the company here, I had sold boutique uh, studio equipment in Nashville for a company, so I had a bit of a background in at least taking photos, writing copy, and getting things online and trying to sell them, and so I got a call. And they said, hey, can you come run our store? It's not making us any money. Uh, that was in 2012. Uh, we did $60,000 online that year. Uh, we did $6.5 million uh, in fiscal year 2018. So it's been uh, really hyper growth for us. It's been very busy. It's difficult. We do sell grills, smokers, sauces, rubs, accessories, fuels, and we inventory them and we ship them. So we're palletizing, uh, building pallets putting grills on them, and shipping them all over the United States every single day. So it is a... Uh, it's a high cost business to be in. It's a difficult business to scale, but it's been going really well for us. So I joined, uh, like I said, six years ago as the e-commerce director. We were a one man shop. I did everything. And now, uh, in our offices here, uh, there are six of us who work in e-commerce. So it's a, a little easier for me. I have, uh, I have less to worry about day to day and can focus on some of the bigger picture stuff. And we, so we put together a great team, um, including our team for our YouTube videos, which is where most of our marketing strategy, uh, lies, um, the past few years and also going forward. Yeah. That's what I'd love if you could just share a little bit on that with us, because I mean, obviously a big part of my day is checking out different e-commerce sites and I can tell you there's a lot of people out there who would love to have the success you've had with YouTube um, and so that's a large part of your marketing success so we'd love to hear about that. Yeah so with YouTube um, a few years ago would have been uh, mid 2015 maybe early 2015 um, I had had the idea that, you know, maybe we should do some recipe videos. And I have a background in audio production, uh, which is why I was in Nashville in the first place selling audio gear. And uh, my brother's a filmmaker, and I thought, well, let me prove this concept. And so I took my cell phone, and I shot a couple of really crude videos uh, with our staff chef, who we happen to have because we do cooking classes one weekend a month here. So we have someone on staff who could show people how to cook. And I said, let's do a rib video. And then I think we did a, a Frenched rack of, uh, of pork. And we made those two videos and we put them up that would have been uh, late winter. And then they didn't go anywhere. And I thought, well, you know, maybe, maybe this isn't for us. And then by the time April and May hit, I started getting notifications for uh, people subscribing to the channel, people commenting. And then it kind of hit me. Oh yeah. Putting up a rib video in February for most of this country is not going to be the time they're going to want to sit outside and cook for five or six hours. And so we saw it take off. That summer, we put together a plan, and by September, we started uploading a weekly video. And uh, so what I told the team was, we're going to go 52 weeks. We're going to upload a recipe video every single Tuesday. We're going to try and hit 9 a.m., which we mostly do. And what the end of the year, we'll decide whether or not this is worthy to keep going forward. So 
I brought my brother in who's a filmmaker. And if you go check out our YouTube channel, which is all things BBQ, all one word, um, you'll notice we have very beautiful cooking videos. They are wonderful. They're really well shot. Um, we started doing those videos every week and it grew quite well. In that first year, we added about 20,000 subscribers and we saw some sales and people were commenting. Um, but in the last two years, we really shifted focus to make sure that our staff chef, Tom Jackson, was kind of the, not the focus of the channel, but he was sort of the face of the channel. And so what we did is we increased his influence. Um, we brought him in. He's culinary trained. We brought him in from Portland, Oregon to come work here. Uh, luckily, we had been friends um, before either of us worked in food. And so it worked out that he wanted to move back home with his family. And uh, so we've really worked on increasing people's awareness of Chef Tom. And he's he's he has huge trust, you know, big trust signals uh, that we've built with him. He's in every video. His face is shown. And so from there, uploading videos every single week, um, we've scaled from the 900 and some subscribers we had when we first started uh, the weekly videos to over 233,000. I have some notes from a talk I gave last week. And so I know that as of as of that day at 8 a.m., we had 233,000 subscribers um, with 318 video uploads. Um, so one of the things that we've done with the videos, we really focused on showing recipes and how to cook them. Uh, it's very difficult when you have as many products as we do uh, with about 3,500 uh, different inventory items to, to do a video one-off for every single thing. And so if we show a recipe video, we have a grill, we have cookware, we have tongs and a spatula, sauces, rubs, seasonings, fuels. We can put a wide, a wide kind of swath of items that we sell into a single video and show people how they'll use them. And one of the things we've noticed is that people will come on right after we do a video. We release it on Tuesday and within an hour, we'll start seeing carts filled with the exact items used in that recipe over and over again. And so it's really allowed us to launch new brands, launch new products and put, put our grills front and center for people who otherwise never would have heard of them. Well, that's actually really interesting because a lot of people, they, they think they have to focus on their product and then they have so many SKUs, they don't know which product to start with and, and how do you showcase the products. But it almost sounds like you're showcasing your products through through cooking with them, through actual use of them, and and then that's what's generating the traffic to your site. Absolutely. So yeah. one of the ways I look at this is I think about the product is um, important, but the recipe as a whole is a how-to. And so if you're going to buy this rub or this sauce and you think, well, you know, I guess I'll put it on chicken. I, I don't know. Um, but instead, we're going to pull back and we're going to look at this. We're going to go, here's a recipe with this. But better than that, our blog is filled with all the recipes we've done. And very quickly, you can type in, you know, Cattleman's Grill California Tri-Tip Rub and have two dozen recipes immediately for something that you may have bought. You may have thought, well, I guess I can just put this on Tri-Tip Steak and that's it. Um, we'll show a ton of different ways to use it. And so it answers the question that most people have is, how do I cook X? And so we're going to show you how to make brisket or ribs or uh, flank steak, um, exactly how to slice it, why you should marinate. And while doing that, we're going to be showcasing products that you can use to make really flavorful meals. Well, I just hit subscribe because you've got me interested and curious. Now I'm, I, I always love how to on uh on barbecuing and, and how and cooking in general because uh, to be honest i'm not very good at it um <laughs> but uh, actually uh, there was one other thing i had to say about that but now it's completely slipped my head um so i apologize for that there josh um no oh that's what it was i also like the fact that your videos aren't super super long they're not like an hour long uh video have you found have you found a, a sweet spot for the length of the videos or anything like that? You know, we really worried a lot about length of video when we first started. We tried to keep them short, under seven minutes. And then as we went, um, I finally looked at uh, at my brother and at Chef Tom, and I said, listen, just make it as long as it needs to be to complete the recipe. Don't hurry up, show all the steps. And what we found is we have about 65% uh, video view rate. So no matter how long it is, our average is that people are getting through 65% 
which is quite long for videos that are over five or six minutes. Um, I believe our longest video is our turducken video, and it was about a half an hour, but you have to debone a chicken, debone a duck, debone a turkey, make stuffing, put them all together, uh, truss it, and sew it up. And so one of the things we found is that in the description, we just noted, hey, down in the description below, you can click on a link, and that'll take you to the next step. Uh, so if they need to rewatch anything, especially in a video that long, it'll be really easy to find. Um, but we found that being engaging and making sure that the recipes are interesting, that people aren't too worried if they go past that 10 or 14 minute mark, um, that they're happy to watch. And a lot of times we think if someone's cooking, it's a weeknight, we're going to do a simple recipe and simple recipes tend to be shorter videos. So it just kind of works in our favor that we like to show a lot of fast, really great recipes that you don't have to spend 10 or 14 hours cooking. Well, I mean, I could imagine a turducken video would have to be a little bit longer, <laughs> but <Right>. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think one of the things you said, too, is there's two key words that I heard in there, and that's engaging and interesting. Um, and I think, I mean, people sit down and they'll, you know, they'll watch an entire movie because it's interesting, but if it's not, they're going to turn it off. Um, and it's the thing, same thing, I think, with, with most media forums. I mean, even with the podcast that we run here, we find that you know, of course, there's certain time frames that might be work a little bit better here and there, and they always have your, you know, what they recommend out there and that sort of thing. But I've really found that, you know, some of the hour-long video, uh, hour-long podcasts, because of how interesting they were, people pay attention and listen to them quite often. Uh, whereas also I can have a 10-minute show, and it can be just as successful. Um, and it's really because, it's, you know, we find that it has to just, you know, has to be engaging and interesting so that people want more of it, right? So Yeah, and I think that's yeah. where having Chef Tom, he, he has a really great personality. If you go watch the very first video, he was he was a little more flat, um, maybe a little nervous to be staring at the camera and telling somebody how to cook. It, it You know, you have a bit of that imposter syndrome for some people, even though he'd, he'd worked at a James Beard award-winning uh, bakery in Portland before he came here, and he certainly has the uh, the skills. If you watch any of the videos, it's immediately noticeable that the guy knows how to cook. Um, but he's gone from being a little hesitant on camera to really finding sort of a sweet spot. He's not overselling it. He's not overhyping, but he's very conversational. People really like him. We have had people fly in from all over the country to take cooking classes here simply because they watch his videos. And his videos have allowed him to uh, to kind of grow outside of our group here. Um, next week, maybe the week after, one or two weeks from this record date, um, him and our crew will be down in South Beach cooking the Food Network and Cooking Channel South Beach Wine and Food Festival. So they're doing two events there. Um, and then in early May, he's flying out to Australia to cook meat stock in Sydney. So these videos have been a way for us to uh, grow our brand and also have a brand ambassador in Chef Tom that travels around the world teaching people how to cook simply because they enjoy what we do on YouTube so much. That is very, very cool. That's awesome, Josh. Way to go with that, man. Like, that's just Thank a you. really interesting. There would have been so many little facets that had to all come together, and, and they, like they have, and I really think it, you've just nailed it. So, again, congrats to you on that one for sure. Thank you. Um, I do have one other question the outside of the world of, uh, of YouTube, um, and it goes to something that I originally reached out to you about, and that was the Enjoy Now and Pay Later. Um, I've done a few shows on it and talked to different people um, about, you know, whether or not it's something you should do or shouldn't do and what type of success they say you're going to have. And a lot of the people I've talked to have been have been industry experts or people who are are specifically endorsing that type of uh, solution. Um, so that's why I really wanted to reach out to you and find out how it's working out for you, if you have any thoughts on that. Uh, absolutely. And and do you mind if I use brand names in this? I don't get a kickback from go, anybody. You can go right ahead. Absolutely. All right. So uh, probably the most popular uh, financing company for e-commerce companies is a firm. Uh, a few years ago, we signed up with a firm. Uh, they were all over the place. I think if you've ever bought a mattress online and financed it, it's a very good chance that that's who, who was used on, on that store. Um, and we found that it was fine. You know, we didn't have a big increase in sales, but it wasn't costing us anything. We were giving the option to customers. And after a couple of years running the system and trying to get the sales up, um, 
we were just having a really hard time scaling a firm for our business. It just was not, for whatever reason, it was not working for ATBBQ. You know, it, it works wonderfully apparently for mattresses and maybe grills are just not the thing um, that they're, uh, they were focused on. And so we started to look around and of course in your inbox comes companies always, always, they have always have the thing that's going to make you the next billion dollars, you know, and I always feel like if that's true, they'd probably be doing it themselves. But <laughs> yeah. um, a, a company named Bread kept popping up and it kept popping up in a couple of forums I frequent and I thought, all right, um, let's chat with them. And so uh, I, I, I don't have to, and we have a wonderful finance team here who just got on the phone with them and started chatting and uh, everything made sense. The numbers made sense. They had slightly better um, interest rates for our customers, which makes us happy anytime we could save them money. And then their, uh, their terms uh, were a little longer. So we had, it just sort of fit, uh, fit our customer, our core customer group a little better. And we thought, well, Hey, a firm isn't doing a ton for us, you know, nothing may be against them and, and what they're doing. Um, but let's just go ahead and make the switch. And, I didn't think much of it. I was like, okay, you know, maybe we'll get one more order a month or something, but I wasn't too hyped. And then we got a little deeper into the fall. I don't remember the exact date we turned on bread. It would have been sometime in the summer. And uh, the six months previous to when we turned bread on, we had had three orders with a firm. Uh, within a week, we had three orders with bread. And I thought, okay, well, that that's a lot better. Maybe it's a fluke. And actually, I looked at numbers, and for November 2018, it's a very busy month for us because – Thanksgiving is a huge cooking holiday. Um, our average order value was $234. And with bread, our average order value was $1,100. And so one of the things I noticed is that while bread orders only accounted for 2.1% of all of the orders in, in November, it accounted for over 10.5% of our revenue for the month. And one of the reasons is that they weren't just buying expensive grills or or, you know, even expensive knives or accessories like a like an expensive Wi-Fi barbecue thermometer. They were loading up their cart with a lot of low price items, a, a bunch of brines and poultry rubs and and maybe a set of poultry shears that's thirty dollars. But they were getting over that one hundred dollar mark that for us is our free shipping mark uh, for all of those accessories. And they were doing it over and over again. And so it was driving up these small, uh, small orders you know, taking them to 10 and 20 times what someone would normally spend and saying, well, hey, if I can finance this 150 or $200 and get all the things I'd like to have for this big Thanksgiving dinner, I want to impress the family. And they were pulling the trigger on a much larger cart. And then it also allowed us to scale up our grill sales during that time of year. And I think everybody's, usually people are very surprised to hear that November and December are our best months for grill sales. And the reason is people are ready to buy them for those big holiday dinners. And so one of the reasons we've attributed this success to bread is they just find their way into the funnel earlier. So on our cart, uh, instead of having to get all the way to the cart, add something there, and then click through to financing, you'll find that there's a financing button on every single product page. And so you can start the process right away. And then once people do that, something clicks in their head and they go, oh, well, I can just, I, I can finance all of this and I'll go ahead and add that knife I was looking at and maybe that little briner bucket and that thermometer. And all of a sudden, when they were coming to spend 30 or $40, they're spending three or $400. And it makes it much easier for them. You know, the, the wife or, or husband in some cases isn't going to complain as much if they're spending all this money at the barbecue store. And it allows us to get more items to them much quicker. Customer lifetime value goes up. Average order value obviously goes up. A 417% increase in average order value with a financed order with bread in November uh, as opposed to a standard order. So it's been absolutely fantastic. I, I can't recommend finding a good finance company that, that you can work with enough. I know there are several that depending on the industry you're in, there are some that are very focused on car parts that are others that finance makeup, which surprised me a bunch, you know, <laughs> there were that many people financing makeup, but there's an entire industry for it. Um, so I would say go out there, find, find some of them, get some demos, chat with some people, um, see if you can get some of their customers, uh, phone numbers. Uh, they're never going to give you a bad customer's phone number, but it's always nice to talk to somebody. And I would tell anybody who's at least doing six figures uh, a year online to go ahead and find that now, because you'll see, um, big growth with a good financing option. Very cool.
you had uh, so many numbers there thrown out that I was just blown away, and that's awesome. I mean, that gives us it gives people some some real hard facts and figures to really consider when they're building their store um, and and their sales uh, channels. And I think one of the things I think was really interesting too is that the fact that you have the financing button on every single product page. Um, I think that's that's a very powerful tool, and it's if nothing else, it's in their face more and more often than it, it than it isn't, and so that just makes them start thinking, well, yeah, I could finance this order, get it over that that magic number for free shipping, and then all of a sudden they they're building that cart to be quite large uh, because it's being financed over time, right? Absolutely, uh, it, it was yeah. one of the things that I kind of fought when we first uh, turned bread on was that we have these, you know, uh, smoked flaked finishing salt that we love. If you watch our videos about every every other recipe uses it, it seems. Um, but they're $3.99. They're 4 bucks. And I thought, well, come on. We have an as low as $0.13 cents a month on here. That doesn't make any sense. Why in the world would we, would somebody want to finance a $4 purchase? And I said, maybe we should turn it off and only turn it on uh, once it hits, you know, $99 um, on an individual item. And then almost immediately, I was proven completely wrong. So don't always go with your gut. Uh, let the let the data speak for itself instead of assuming what people will do, because it told them, hey, you can finance this. Hey, you can finance purchases. And that was a, you know, a complete revelation to me that shouldn't have been. Um, but sometimes you you have a feeling for something, and then you look back and go, oh yeah, that makes complete sense why people would want to know that you can finance even if they're looking at a four dollar item. So. Well, my first gut reaction would have been the same as yours was. I mean, <laughs> but once you hear it through, like what you said there, it really starts to make more sense as to why they would actually do that. Uh, awesome. Well, seriously, Josh, I could talk with you all day and just pick your brain forever, but I think you've you've provided so much value in this call, um, this podcast with everybody. Um, I appreciate your time very much. Um, so thank you very much for being on the show. Um, I like to end the show with one, how people can get a hold of you, and if you have any final words of wisdom. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so you can get a hold of me. Uh, easiest way is to find me on either Instagram or Twitter, and the handle there is at the Josh Carey. So it's uh, J O S H C A R Y. Um, so you can. Uh, direct message me, tag me in something. If you have any questions about uh, about YouTube especially if you have any questions there, any questions about, uh, you know, specific, you know, YouTube SEO practices or anything, um, hit me up and, and ask me. I'd be happy to uh, happy to chat with anybody about it because I find it not only fascinating, but I feel like I've found um, a handful of things that really allows us to rank quickly. So that's something that I'm always, uh, always available for. And um, last, let's see, any, any words of wisdom, man. <laughs> it's only Monday, you know, so it's, it's hard to have wisdom. Um, uh, yeah, completely outside of the scope of what we're doing, uh, what we've been talking about here, but uh, build a great team. Um, one thing here is that, you know, for years I was the only person handling, putting things online, taking photos, doing all of that. And slowly but surely we've added um, great creative director, photographer, marketing manager, people to handle social media and a really good team that works well together. Uh, we do family lunches every Wednesday here. Everybody just brings their own food, but we sit around a big conference table, and it kind of allows us just to reconnect as a team, opens up communication. So as uh, as your businesses grow, those first and second hires um, really find somebody you want to spend time with because you're going to be looking at uh, you're going to be looking at the same faces for a long time, and uh, it's it's well worth it to find somebody that you're going to work really well with together. I think that's great, great words of wisdom. Thank you, Josh. And I guess I put you on the spot with that one. So I apologize, but thank you for the great words. Uh, Um, No problem. All right. And thanks again for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. You have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something. Your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Stay hungry. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Welcome to E-Commerce All-Stars, brought to you by Nadimo.com, where we help e-commerce entrepreneurs accelerate growth through modern technology and innovative thinking.